everybody. Uh, glad to see you've decided to come out and worship with us this morning. Um, we welcome you, to, welcome you to our worship service. I'd like to ask uh, Pastor Carol if he would open us in prayer, please. service for Pastor John will be October the 18th, that's a Sunday, and uh, please try to make that, it's going to be a very meaningful and special ceremony. We have a deacon meeting today after church, and also Pastor John gave me this, uh, it's a National Day of Worship and Prayer, Saturday, September the 26th, uh, Pastor Graham is having his the same day in D.C., and this will be down at Good Hope Baptist Church. Uh, if you'd like to participate, be there from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. September, Saturday, Saturday, September the 26th. And before the uh, praise team comes up, I'd like to give a verse of scripture in Psalm 95.1. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. And now the uh, praise and worship team will come up with some praise and worship music. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you. It's a little nice and chilly out there this morning. It feels like fall. I think the first day of fall actually is Tuesday. So I guess this is... This is about right. So please sing with us from, um, from your seats as we lift our voices in praise to our Lord.
Lord, you're my desire. Lord, you're my desire. Amen. Amen.
Well, good morning. Before, before anybody gets up and runs out of here, I'm not preaching this morning. Um, but what I would like to do is uh, is recognize those members that have passed on during this past year. <clears throat> Mary Catherine Massey, Robert Snellings, Cheryl Moore, and Wayne Saul all went to be with the Lord during this past year. God's word tells us in John 3.16, and I'm sure many of you could just recite it along with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in me shall not perish but have everlasting life. And Romans 10.13 says, For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus died on the cross at Calvary so that the whoever's could have an eternal home in heaven. Mary Catherine, Robert, and Wayne are the who, whoever's. They all believed in our Lord Jesus and now reside in their eternal home. <clears throat> Mary Catherine. Someone here that could accept this rose on behalf of Mary Catherine? Door? <clears throat> For as long as I can remember, Mary Catherine set about four pews back from the front. Um, I mean, the, the doors were open on Sunday mornings. Mary Catherine was, was here at church. When, when did this happen? I'm sorry, what? When did she pass? She passed last uh, Monday afternoon. Yep. <clears throat> um, I always enjoy talking with Mary Catherine. You know, many times before service or after service or any time you bump into her, that's exactly what we would talk about. A lot of times we would uh, we'd talk about the message that day, or, or the songs that were sang that day. We even talked about the weather. Uh, certainly enjoyed all the times that I, I got to speak with Mary Catherine. Uh, and her, her service and dedication to the Lord will forever be remembered. <clears throat> Next is uh, Robert Snellings. Anyone here today that could accept this for Robert Snellings? If not, I'll, I'll be sure to that he gets that, his family gets that. I was fortunate enough to have attended Sunday school with Robert. Uh, as a young Christian at the time, I could see that Robert loved the Lord. I was able to uh, help Robert out at his home a few different times with some small jobs, and many times he, he talked about his love for his family, and uh, his love for Christ shined through and through. And uh, oftentimes, uh, with me being able to to help him do something, he quickly would return the favor. And, uh, and I, I certainly appreciated his friendship. <clears throat> Cheryl Moore. Cheryl taught me a lot in this church. Uh, his strong faith, his soft demeanor, his patience shined bright. This could only be found with someone who had a love of the Lord. His faith never wavered during times of trial and tribulation. I'll forever remember uh, Cheryl, every time you saw him, whether it would be here at the church or if you've seen him out and about, he drove the activity bus for, for the schools. And uh, so we got to cross paths quite a bit outside of church. He always wore a smile. you never seen him without his smile. And that extended hand, he, and Cheryl had some of the biggest hands. He would lay them hands out there, just a, a warm greeting. And uh, certainly... We'll remember Cheryl in many ways. Is there anyone here that could accept the rose for Cheryl? I'll make sure that they get them. <clears throat> and the next one we have on the list is uh, Wayne Sorrell. I've, I've known Wayne, I guess, since I was born, um, as, long, as far back as I can remember. And uh, the one thing I'll always remember about Wayne was his, his generosity. You know, as a, as a young kid out hunting with my dad, you know, Wayne was part of the hunt club. He was always there. And it, it didn't take long to learn that, you know, Wayne always had a pool of food. And, uh, and, and he expected you 
to help eat it. And, you know, 30 years later, it didn't change. You know, Wayne showed up, we was out there hunting. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, he he showed up there specifically to bring us food, uh, and it just showed. You know, it was to him. It wasn't about the hunting. It wasn't about that. It was about the fellowship. You know, and just uh, and spending time with uh, the people he cared about. <clears throat> and Wayne made some of the best ham salad. You could ever eat. <clears throat> I'd like to read a poem. We want to always remember the beautiful life you lived and keep alive the memories we have through remembering what you did. For you're so special to all of us, a wonderful person indeed. Your love, laughter, and warm smile reflected a heart that believed. Just in the everyday things we do, we remember your faith and love in the words you spoke to help us through is a continued reminder for us. Although we miss you so very much, we know we'll see you once more. For this is the hope we have in God, being reunited in the Lord. And as we gather, we will continue to share special times we went through. For these are memories that warm our hearts as we honor the memory of you. <clears throat> Also, on behalf of uh, the deacon body here at, at Hebron, we will be donating 40 Bibles, uh, Gideon Hotel Bibles, in the memory of Mary Catherine, Robert, Cheryl, and Wayne. Uh, they they touch the lives of, of many of us here, and, and through these Bibles, they'll continue to touch the lives of others. So thank you all for being here this morning. Pastor, are these going to be in your way right there? Amen. Thank you, Larry. You wanna, this, this wasn't part of the, the message, but I, I just want to share this uh, after seeing what I, what I just witnessed. In John chapter... 13, in verses 34 and 35, Jesus said, This is a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I've only been here a couple months, but if I didn't know anything else about this congregation especially after what I saw just now, because so many churches don't do this. If I didn't know anything else about the family of Hebron, I know that you love each other. I know that you love each other. And uh, I'm sure these folks are looking down on us from heaven right now uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ celebrating. You know? And I think if they were to say anything to us, it would be, but keep the faith. Push on. Finish your course. And, and again, keep the faith. You know, God had them, the, all these folks here for a specific period of time to, to do a work. And they've gone because God's, God's work for them on earth was, was finished. But he's got a race for us to continue to run. And uh, as, we, as we look back and remember, we also give, and this, this ties into my message too, we, we can be looking forward you know, to what God has for us to do as long as we draw breath in this body. Amen. Let's, let's pray and I'll get into the message this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you again, Lord. I thank you for, for, for Hebron, Lord, and, and for the love that they have for you, the love that they have for each other, Lord, the love they have for a lost and dying world, wanting to see people coming to know Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that we, that, that, that this church, that we as a family take time at least once a year to remember those 
that have served you so well and have gone on to the reward. I pray for the families today that you would just comfort them because I'm, I'm sure this service is a bittersweet service. Lord, they're thankful that their loved ones have been recognized, but they're, they're hurting a bit as the, the memory of loss, the loss comes back to them. Lord, I pray that you would just comfort them as only you can. Lord, help them to, to, to see how their loved ones serve you and, and, and perhaps use this as, a, as something to revitalize their relationship with you. That they would call upon you to, to help you clarify to them the race that you want them to run. And Lord, that goes for the rest of us too, the rest of the church family. The right? family that may not have been family by human blood, but we're blood because of the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross for us. Lord, help us to remember that you've got a race for us to run. Help us to do it. Lord, I pray for the message this morning as we take a look, as we prepare to celebrate the Lord's table, and we take a look at that first Passover and see how God was starting something new there. That even though Hebrews got 173 years of serving you under their belt, Lord, I believe you've got something for us to either continue or something new you want us to do to glorify you and to point people to Jesus Christ. I pray this message this morning brings encouragement where encourages, encouragement's needed, correction where correction's needed. But Father, most importantly, I pray that this message will bring Christ to that one or those many that may be in need of a Savior this morning. We'll give you all the praise and honor and glory. We ask in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I did forget to say God is good. God is good. Oh, come on. Are, are, would you be, would you, if we were in heaven right now and, and, and Michael, one of the archang, archangels, said God is good, would you, would you be that subdued in saying it? Let's say it like we were in heaven. God is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Thank you, guys. You'll, you'll get there. I've got, I've got faith in you. If you have your Bibles with you, I ask you to turn to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. We're going to be sharing verses 21 through 27. We're going to talk about the Passover. And now, whether we realize it or not, as God instituted the Passover, He was establishing, He was starting something new with the nation of Israel. And I believe God's got something new. Keep doing the good that we've been doing. But I believe we can take some lessons from this to see that God has something new He wants us to do. Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 27. If you're physically able, if you stand in reverence to God's Word. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. And as you take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the, and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. You shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as He promised that you shall keep His service. And it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? That you shall say, It is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when He struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their heads and they worshiped. May God bless us by the hearing, the reading, but most especially the doing of His Word. You may be seated. Excuse me for a second. Oh, goodness. And again, just to warn everybody, it's not COVID. <laughs> but being out here in God's country with, the, with the, the, the hay being cut and the grass being cut, man, it's doing a number on me. I want you to take a look at this this morning. So, you know, we, we, we think of the Passover as being a, a, an old, and, and, and I don't, don't mean it in the bad sense, but in the good sense, uh, as an old tradition, an old observance. Even, even communion we see as something that was established long ago, but something good. But you know what? There's a first time for everything. And at this first Passover, not only was the Passover new, God was getting ready to establish something new with Israel. God was getting rid of the old. 
400 years of slavery and misery were coming to an end for the children of Israel. The time of, of, of the Israelites questioning God. God, have you forgotten us? God, have you... I'm sorry, God, do you love us anymore? And maybe even, God, are you real? That's a question people are asking today. But those three questions were about to be answers, and, and in a way, their faith was getting ready to become sight. Because if you remember from the Old Testament, 400, and I believe exactly 436 years before they went into slavery, God said, I'm sending you to Egypt, but I'm going to bring you back out. And so that promise that they held to, their faith, God's going to deliver us one day, was getting ready to be made sight. They were to observe this first Passover looking for something new. God's going to deliver us. They had already seen glimpses of this new thing God wanted to do with the arrival of Moses and the, the, the plagues that fell on Egypt. Wow, I've never seen that before. You know, hopefully we'll never see that again, at least in our lifetime. The Israelites were, were to observe the Passover from that point forward in remembrance of the something new God was going to do. He said, you're not just doing it tonight, but from here on out I want you to do it in remembrance of the new thing that I'm going to do tonight or tomorrow. Because they, they, they had to go through the night. That something new is to take them out of Egypt to initiate a new covenant and to lead them into the promised land. In fact, the very act of the Passover, I'm repeating myself, the very act of the, of the Passover, they saw God work in a way that He had never done before. Well, just to refresh our memories, what happened during the Passover? God told everybody, every household, I want you to kill a lamb, I want you to drain blood, save it in a bowl, I want you to roast a lamb, and I want you to eat all of it. Eat all of it that night. Don't let any of it go to, go to waste. If there's any left over in the morning, you can burn it. But the important part was, he said, I want you to take, well, just as important, I shouldn't say the important part, because it was all important. But he said, what I want you to do is I want you to take the blood and get a bunch of hyssop. And hyssop, I don't remember exactly what it looked like. I, I think I saw some, some depictions where it looked a little bit like broccoli. You know, but at any rate, they would take the hyssop dip it in the bowl of blood, and then, then put it on the doorpost and the lintel, the top part of the door. And, and God told them, don't leave your house because I'm going to send the angel of death through all the land of Egypt to kill the firstborn of everything. Not just the firstborn, you, you know, uh, 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 people, but the firstborn cattle, sheep, you name it, the firstborn, everything, the angel of death was going to kill. He said, you stay in your homes and as the angel of death goes by your house and sees that blood covering your home, covering you, which is a foreshadowing of Christ to come, the angel of death will pass by your house. And so that, that, that was a, a, a foreshadowing of the sacrifice that Christ was going to make one day on the cross, which is what I'm going to come to next. At the Last Supper, just as that Passover was making way for something new, at the Last Supper, as they observed the Passover with, with Jesus, God was getting ready to do something new that He had never done before. i got so many markers in here. You don't have to turn there, but if you just want to write, write this down, Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20, we read this, When the hour had come, He, meaning Jesus, sat down in the twelve apostles with Him. And he said, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until the kingdom is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Christ's blood signified <clears throat> something new. The old times, the old covenant, the being under the law was making way for something new. God allowed this period of time, this, this covenant under the law, to not only point people to him, 
but to show them that they couldn't keep the law on their own. That's why they were continually having to do the animal sacrifices. You know, there's not a single one of us, <clears throat> excuse me, that can say that we keep the law. We might be able to keep it outwardly, but there's no way we can keep it inwardly. And, that, and that's what they weren't getting, especially if you remember the Jewish leaders of Jesus' time. They, they, yeah, they did a good job of keeping the law openly, but what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I, I, I tell you that if, if you, it's written that if you murder, if you kill somebody, that it's a sin. But I tell you, if you even think about somebody with hatred in your heart, that's the same thing as committing the act. And so God allowed that time of the covenant under the law to show the people you can't keep the commandments on your own. You can't be holy and righteous on your own just by slaughtering a, a, a sheep or a goat or, or, or a ram. All those sacrifices for sin at the, in the tabernacle and in the temple over all those years were really IOUs for what Jesus was getting ready to do. Hebrews 9.12 and Hebrews 10.4 tells us that the blood of goats and sheep and bulls cannot take away our sin. I will also add to that, good deeds can't take away our sin. Church membership can't take away our sin. Being baptized can't take away our sin. Giving a whole bunch of money to the church of charity can't take away our sin. Jesus Christ, the real Lamb of God, the firstborn, now remember that firstborn back in the Old Testament, was sacrificed, Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, firstborn, though He was eternal with God. Just want to make sure I clarify that. He came to this earth and was going to offer Himself as a sacrifice to God, making a way for the forgiveness of sins and a way to our Heavenly Father. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice. His perfect, sinless blood. The blood of the Holy Lamb of God that owed Him. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. This was happening right here. It was happening right here as He shed His sinless blood. And from that time forward, A.D. 220. Well... 20, 20, 20 years ago, 2,020 years ago, give or take a few, it came into effect. From that time forward, we, the church, are commanded to observe this ordinance, to keep the Lord's table in remembrance, not, not of what happened back in Egypt, but what happened back on the hill in Calvary so many years ago. It's a new covenant, as I read in, 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 in Luke in, in that verse. This cup is the new covenant, my blood, which is shed for you. Just as Israel covered their, their, their doorways with blood so the angel of death would pass over, Christ shed His blood to cover us so that the angel of death, in other words, separation from God for all eternity in a real place called hell, Jesus' blood covers, covers us, our heart. With our church, I believe God's ready, getting ready to do something new. We, 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 keep doing, we keep doing what we're doing, but I believe He's going to, this is a, a, a new era, as I said a couple of weeks ago, just because this is the first combination of us being together. So a lot of stuff's going to be new. For 173 years, God has used Hebron for His glory. We now stand at the starting line of a new beginning. My message a couple weeks ago, we've never been this way before because we've never been together. There's been combinations of you guys and other pastors and me and other churches, but this is the first combination of all of us together. So in essence, it's something new. God wants to use us to draw, first of all, to glorify Him, but also to draw people to Himself. And we observe the Lord's table to look back at the sacrifice Jesus made. And we remember the sacrifice with thanksgiving. But folks, we should also use it to re-energize ourselves, to revitalize ourselves, to revive ourselves. And remember that the reason God started Hebron 173 years ago is why we're still in existence today. Again, to glorify Him. And part of glorifying Him is going out there and bringing people far away from God 
to God. Did you ever stop to think about that? 173 years ago, the founders of Hebron didn't found Hebron just because they wanted a place to gather and worship. They founded Hebron because they were on fire for Jesus Christ and wanted to see their world around them come to know Jesus. See, God, that mission hasn't changed. Now, we may have new methods of doing it as the time goes on. I mean, we're, we're doing things different right now. Some of us have masks on. Some of us don't. We're separated by, by six feet. You know, we may have different methods in the years to come. we got folks watching on Facebook. Twenty years ago, that wouldn't have happened. The methods might change. But we need, as we partake of the Lord's table, we need to remember the message never changes. Jesus Christ crucified. Jesus Christ resurrected. Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of God. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to have forgiveness of sins, and the only way to have a relationship with God the Father. As we observe communion this morning, let's remember that. And I would say this, if you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior this morning, I want to lead you in a prayer quickly. Keep in mind, this prayer isn't what saves you. I say this every Sunday. The prayer isn't what saves you. Jesus is the one that saves you. The prayer we use, that's just the means, that's the tool, that's the vehicle we use to, to speak our hearts to God. And if it's your desire this morning to come to know Christ as Lord and Savior... Pray this prayer with me. Pray something like this silently or to yourself. Heavenly Father, I realize this morning that I'm a sinner. That means I've done things to disobey your word with my thoughts, my life, my works. Lord, I'm sorry for that. Lord, I realize this morning that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross to take the penalty of my sins. And that he shed his blood to cover my sins and make a way to you. And right here and right now, though I might not understand everything, but based by my faith in you and my faith in your word, I turn from my sin, I turn from my old life, and I turn to Jesus. Lord, I realize that he died for me. I turn to him to have a relationship with you, though I might not understand everything. Based on your word, I put my faith in Christ this morning. I start my new life this morning. Father, thank you for that gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And as, and as I've been saying just about every Sunday since I've gotten here, uh, if you have any questions on Christianity, get with me after the service. If you're on Facebook or the church website, comment something and I'll get in touch with you uh, because that's the, the most important thing next to worshiping God is seeing people come to Christ. It's the most important decision you could ever make in your life. And I don't want to see people missing salvation, if you will, by that much. You know, We're going to go into our time of communion now. So, Pastor Carol, if you want to come on up. I just want to explain things a little bit, how I, how I see things here based on the Scripture. First of all, communion is going to be a little bit different.